Coming up on this week's show, our celebs get a real sense of speed. Even you are there. I could have jumped here. I'll be safe. I'll be safe. They get their hands dirty to win money for charity in this week's challenge. Before Blitzbocker, Quacker Smith and Justin Gedult turn racing into a full contact sport. You're watching Speed Stars. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's show. Last week, local funny men Joey Rustin and Rish Lou B surprised us with their competitive spirit and more importantly, their blistering lap times. Our two funny guys find themselves in second and third position on the leaderboard. Joey Rustin in second position. I think he still can't believe how fast he went. If you've missed our episodes, let me explain to you how this works. At the end of our season, we're going to have 20 names on our leaderboard. The fastest eight will be qualifying for an actual race in eight identical VW Polos right here at SWAT Corps. I would imagine that speed and agility are qualities that are gonna come to good stead if you wanna find yourself in the top eight. And our next two guests, well, they have those qualities in spades. Fast and fearless, Quacker Smith has been a revelation on the rugby park this season. As part of the all-conquering Blitzbocker team and the Lions, it seems he has the same approach to driving. You keep your foot on the pedal. I grew up on a farm, man. You know that on a gravel road, you don't take your foot off, otherwise you're going to start slipping. Going up against his Blitzbock teammate in the show, it isn't Justin Gedult's trademark hairstyle that grabs attention. It's his natural ability and standout performances on the field. Will he be a standout on the racetrack, though? I knew what it was, what I was supposed to do. A little bit more cautious, huh? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I kind of feel like I'm being rude here. I should maybe do a Mexican wave or flip and bow down. Legends. I mean, the, what the Blitzbock have done for getting South Africans fired up about rugby again has, has, has been amazing. Justin Quacker, great to have you guys here. Thanks, so. Sum that thing up, Justin. Being part of that team that is <laughs> all conquering. What, an, what a year, it's been amazing. Uh, you know, it's just, it's not something that, that everyone gets the opportunity to be part of. So, yeah, I think the guys just enjoy each other's company. We have a great bond, the brotherhood, uh, the relationship between the coaches and the, and the players. It's, it's just amazing. We don't get that in any other system. But for us, we're lucky to be part of that, that great system. And we've, we've been building it for a long time now. So, <laughs> we had to watch, watch once, once in a while. It had to happen sooner or later. But it's it's cool that, I mean, you talk about the brotherhood. Quack, I want to bring you in here on that as well, because that brotherhood's important, and you're part of another amazing brotherhood in terms of the lines. You've kind of had the best of the best of both yeah. with, with Akers as well. How important is that? Because, I mean, ability is one thing, but there's something else that most people who have never played rugby before don't understand, the psychology of rugby and, and playing for each other. How critical is that in these two teams that you play for? Yeah, yes, it's it's very important. I think it's easy to stick together when it goes well and you're winning games and then it's easy, everybody is close to each other. But as soon as it gets tough and you start losing games, that's actually when it counts. And that's where the sevens and the lines, we get it closer, the tougher it gets. And I, I know it's difficult sometimes to get closer because this guy maybe made a mistake, but we know we're all humans and we make mistakes. But if we stick together and we all play as a team, it makes it so much easier on the end of the day. I'm going to bring up, let's talk about mistakes. I mean, I'm going to bring it up. We were sitting at the final at, uh, at Emirates Ellis Park. I mean, such a touch and go thing. For you, walking off that field with 63,000 people there, walking up that tunnel on your own, how, how did that feel? I mean, the coach was behind you, the teammates have supported you. How, how was that moment? Yeah, yes, it's not a moment that I want to relive ever in my life again. But oh, it's a thing I, I gave my all and it didn't come my way. I might have just looked down earlier, but yeah, the momentum was too much. And it's like a, a finalist of 100 meter that trains for four years, who goes to Olympics, and he has a false start and he's disqualified. So it's a difficult thing, 
But I think it also made me a better player and I will definitely grow and become a better player after that. You're right. I mean, you've got to make decisions at a split second that, that change a game like that, even more so, Justin, in sevens. Because I think that's what makes it so exciting at the moment because any team at any given day can win this thing. And it often comes under one mistake that gives away possession and, and there we go. And we know as a blitz balker, we've been on the, on, on the losing and side in so many games. Right. I think Rio... Yeah, bronze, it's fantastic, but geez, it should have been gold, eh? Um, one mistake, one one miscommunication or one simple error is just will cost you the game. So you have to be on point. You know, any team can 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 beat any team. Every team have good coaching now and the game of seven has been growing so much that it, you can't afford to make any mistakes nowadays. So yeah, I see the guys are now getting to, to choose. They're getting to play both. I mean, Kwaka's already doing it. If you had to choose tomorrow, sevens or fifteens, which game do you prefer? <laughs> I'll definitely do sevens, but uh, I would love to play some 15 men in the future. Yeah. I would have probably played this year, but I injury unfortunately got an injury. So yeah, I would have loved to, to, to play it in the future, but uh, I definitely prefer sevens. For you, you're obviously playing it. Is it difficult to switch? head, mind space between the two games? Yeah, definitely. There's a big difference between the two. But I think both accomplish each other because in sevens, you see the space and you're much quicker and much fitter. With 15 men, it's a bit more physical, but then the sevens help you again to get your speed and to see the space earlier. Yeah. And the 15 men helps you to bring that physicality in the sevens game. Yeah, it's something he certainly got. Kwaka, where is that from? <laughs> yeah, it's a nickname my brother gave to me the night I was born. They were hunters on my grandparents' farm. And they asked my brother, my brother is two years older than me, and they asked him, listen, what's your brother's name? But he grew up on the farm, so he only knew animal names. <laughs> and he, he told him, no, Kwaha is his name. And, 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 that, and that stuck. I mean, no one ever calls you by your first name. No, Crazy. only my mother when she's mad at me. Oh, she, uh, <laughs> or your girlfriend when, you, when you're in trouble. <laughs> Let's move on to cars quickly before we head into our safety challenge. Are you a car nut? I, I heard you drive some VW performance vehicles. Yes, I've driven a <laughs> G GTI before and then uh, I was a Rocco R now. But I'm not, I'm not that much um, into cars, although I drive a pretty fast car, like they say. <laughs> but I'm not a car fanatic. Well, we're about to find out when we unleash you on the track. Quite an interesting story. Everyone assumes the broken nose rugby. But you are quite familiar with four wheels and going fast. Yeah, definitely. I think motorsport started way back for me when I was 10 years old. We did uh, off-road racing, enduro races with the quad bikes. And I had an accident there, my helmet broke and everything. And that's actually where my nose broke so badly and my cheekbone. So, but oh well, it's, it's life and I like enjoying fast cars and I enjoy motorsport a lot. In rugby, the only time you come to stop is when you get smashed in a tackle. In motoring terms, that equates to a crash, which of course is something you want to avoid. So to do that, it helps having a sense of speed. Before we let you go fast, we want to first teach you how to stop. So we're going to do a quick stopping exercise. You have three different speeds. So we're going to be doing 60, 100 and 140 k's an hour. So. You just must apply yourselves and see where you anticipate the car's gonna stop in those various speeds. For this lesson, our guests have to stand on the spot where they anticipate our GTI will stop. I wanna stay close to Ryan because he was asking about weight and things and you know, <laughs> no. nothing is gonna stop there. 60. He's where taking do you think notes. Stop? <laughs> 60. <laughs> Dead break. 60 there. Setting the benchmark, our first speed was 60 kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, three, three. I you dead, you dead, you dead, you dead. Yes, it's <laughs> close, sir. Can I see, man? When did you start breaking? Okay. No way. No way. That gave you guys a good idea. Half of you are dead already. Now we're going to up the speed to 100 k's now. Watch this. Now, with most of our guests having got it horribly wrong when predicting just how far it would take to stop a car from 60 kilometers an hour, would they fare better at 100 kilometers an hour? Um, no. We all died! We all died. Even you are there! I could have jumped here. Even I was you. And just to reiterate what Michael and Chop said, I mean, this is a performance car, so it's running on really good brakes, it's running on the best tires, it's an advanced driver, so We're he, know, he knows where well. he's braking. Yeah. Now imagine if he didn't know they had a brake there and he had to anticipate it. That reaction time is going to add another second. Mm. That second's going to add another 50 meters. You, you, you're with me, so put people in the car, suddenly they're four up, or it's wet, changes the dynamic completely. So the distance needed to stop a car increases exponentially with speed, 
So doubling the speed doesn't double the stopping distance. Try multiplying by four. Our final test, 140 kilometers an hour. Oh my word. I think I'm perfect. The replay shows just how far up the road we have moved from when we started at 60 kilometers an hour. And still, we're getting it wrong. I mean, my experience, I was dead twice. So I was like... <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, I thought you said you had that algorithm. Yeah, the Excel spreadsheet doesn't work now. You guys have, have got a taste of, of some of the safety and, and driving tips we're trying to give you. Justin, any standouts for you today? Uh, you know, it's, 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 you can easily misjudge the, the safety of the, the, how fast you're going in a car. So one thing I've learned is you have to save, stay a safe distance from, from the car in front of you so you can stop in time in case that car uh, has an accident or something happens in front. It's amazing. I mean, you guys are all about speed, but you're also all about being able to anticipate speed and, and space. I mean, that's what the rugby game's about. Kwaka, you guys, during that stopping distance in particular, you're often going like, geez, I didn't realize that's what, that's what 120 k's an hour looks yeah. like. Uh, what, what blew your mind today? Yeah, I think for me, it's all about reaction today. I mm. think if you go at the pace of 120 kilometers an hour, it's actually a split second where you react too late, but on the end, it's like probably 50 meters where yeah. you stop too late. So there's a big difference in that. And as I was standing on the side, seeing 140 kilometers an hour, it's crazy, yeah. it's a big difference then being in the car and driving 140 yeah. kilometers. And at the end of the day, we're also sitting in a, in a controlled environment, perfect conditions, the cars are great, the tires are fantastic. We know we've got to stop at this point, but it still kind of baffles your brains. And in Cape Town, guys can't drive there, Justin. Yeah, it's terrible. No. <laughs> Are you I, one of those I, terrible I, I, drivers? No, I just stay far away from them as, as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, listen, safety's out the way. Uh, we're going to start gearing up and, and seeing how fast you can go now, because that's really why we are here. I think what you all want to know at home is will Justin and Quacha's speed on the rugby field equate to a speedy lap time? You're going to have to wait till after the ad break to find out. Hello and welcome back to Speed Stars. Now, as you know by now, this show isn't only about our celebrities. You at home are equally important to us and we want to help you to win big as well. This is how you can get in on the winning action. Head to our website, www.speedstars.co.za, predict the winner in this week's matchup and you could win an advanced driving course valued at 3,000 Rand from Volkswagen Driving Academy. It's time now for our weekly charity challenge. And this one in particular is one that we love here at Speed Stars, not only because it teaches you a vital life skill, but also tests the ability of our teams to work together. So we know Chops and his team weren't the best parkers and they weren't the fastest on the Gymkhana. Will the changing of tires see a change in fortune? Okay guys, this week's chari charity challenge is really a fun one. It's changing a tire. Now most of us don't even know how to change wait, a tire. Wait, wait, stop. Yeah, stop. The wheel is off the ground. It's not. Hey, please check that down, please. Please check it down. Thank you. Now, most of you guys will phone somebody. Today, we've got to change it ourselves. Now, with Joey ensuring that no team gets an unfair advantage, it was time for our stars to get to grips with Goodyear's Eagle F1s. Yes, it's all fun and games, but it's scary how few people actually know how to change a tire. But our guests weren't scared to get their hands dirty in the bid to win money for charity. So a few pointers. It's important to jack the car up on a flat and even surface. Also check for the specific jack points for your car, which you'll find in your car manual. Loosen the wheel nuts before jacking the car up. Once the wheel is off the ground, you can finish loosening and removing the wheel nuts. Once the tire is removed and the spare wheel is in place, thread the wheel nuts on by hand. This ensures that they are seated correctly before tightening with the wheel spanner. Also, always tighten the wheel nuts diagonally across from each other to ensure the wheel sits correctly on the hub. 
Once the wheel nuts are tight, you can lower the jack so that the car is again on all fours before doing the final round of tightening. And finally, it's a win for Chops and his team, thanks to some devious work from Joey. There's only one team. It is an extremely dire situation right now. We're working alongside all the, the government agencies, South Africa being sort of the custodians of 90% of the world's rhino. Uh, we feel that we, we have a sort of a global um, responsibility to you know, make sure the species survives. That's 2,500 rand donated by Goodyear to the Wilderness Foundation. As true superstars on the global rugby stage, both of our contestants know what it means to train hard, whether on the field or in the gym. I'm wondering how they're gonna adapt to training hard behind the wheel. Let's find out. Each of our celebrity guests receive expert advice and on-track training from the VW Driving Academy instructors in the Golf GTIs before switching to our race spec polos for their hot lap training with race aces Mike and Chops. Oh yes, they are back. Chops, of course, the man who changed the face of local motorsport and Mike, the multiple production and touring car champion. Okay, now you must get to the curb. You've got to wide. Feed on. Otherwise, you're going to make a track longer than what it is. You've got to fourth instead of second. Oh, <laughs> Second gear, smooth when you release the brake, oh, the clutch, there you go, turn it in, feet on, throttle, flat now. That's better, keep going, flat, flat, flat. Yes, it needs me to put on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll say. Quacha, we know that you've had some experience on dirt quad bikes, but have you ever been on a racetrack in a car? Yeah, I had one experience in uh, Gold Coast in Australia with the oh, wow. V8 supercars, yeah. It's quite extraordinary. Did you drive? Yeah. We had, did a few laps, so uh, that was quite nice. But I must say, today was also a great experience for me. Yeah. Did Your first time, Justin, have yes. you been on track before? No, I had the opportunity to go with them, but yeah. I decided not to. Oh, why? Because this was my first time. Oh, really? Because I'm not into cars that much. So, yeah. yeah, but you drive the right cars. So, I mean, we, you've kind of got to like something. Did, did you learn something, though? Were the instructors helpful in terms of the pointers and advice they gave you? Yes, very much. And one thing you might, uh, have to tell is you listen to them. It yeah. makes the job much easier on the, on the track. Question is, we know we shouldn't drive like you guys are doing now on a public road, but in this controlled environment, the tips that they're giving you, do you think that helps make you a better driver when you do go on to... A public road? Yeah, no, I think definitely it makes you a better driver. It gives you that more awareness when to brake, when to accelerate, and when to make your decision what to do. And I think that gives you a great, great driving skill. Are we ready to do a hot lap? Yes, definitely. This is it. Our rugby blitz booker are going to prove if they're as blitz on the racetrack as they are on the rugby field. Let's take a look. The challenge. Two stars, two cars, one track in a head-to-head -head race around Swartkorps. Each with their own start and finish line, whoever completes the two laps fastest wins. It was game time for our rugby stars, both eager to get the early advantage, the first points on the board, so to speak. Pushing way too hot. My goodness, that is a massive off. Doing a great job keeping his polo pointed straight. But Justin has also lost it at turn eight. Oh no, there is no way he's going to save that. The pit wall at Swartkorps claims another scalp. Thank goodness for our roll cage of safety harnesses and helmets. So with the race being restarted, albeit under a slightly different format, Quacha was first up to post his fastest times over two laps. 
Now, would all the thrills and spills see a more cautious Quacker Smith? The answer quite clearly is no. It was business as usual, flat out, 100% commitment. Wow, that looks super fast through turn four. The Goodyear Dura Grips being pushed hard through turn six. And he is off again. Turn eight, clearly a fan with our rugby stars. How did he keep that out of the wall? You see, when you kept it flawed, it just kept itself kept straight. Flying, yeah. now, that's when he backed off. That's when it turns into it the turns wall. In, yeah. And then it was Justin's turn. Amazing, straight back in the car and with a smile on his face. That's what racing is about. We are in a safe and controlled environment, in super safe race cars. This is where limits are meant to be explored, not on the public roads. And he's looking good too. Obviously, it's tough to call not having them on track at the same time, but Justin certainly seems a little bit slower through turn four than Quacker. That's a great exit out of turn six. And he shows Gedult through turn eight. Top job. Much better. <laughs> I knew what, it was, what I was supposed to do. A little bit more cautious, eh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Justin, <laughs> we had to change things a little bit after your uh, first lap into the wall. You okay? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Much better to make an accident here than on the, on the road. You bounced back, went out, set a great lap time again. I think that's something that sports cars are used to, taking the knocks and going. Yeah, uh, I actually surprised myself there. I didn't, know I, would, calm? I didn't think I was going to be that calm in that situation. You found yourself there <laughs> on your first lap as well. Yeah, definitely. I went a bit too quick into the corner, but luckily I had experience to just keep it straight and keep the pedal down. So that turn was uh, quite eventful for both of you. Right, so obviously we had to tweak our two-lap race. So you guys raced on your own, but we still have your combined lap time of the two-lap race. And this is important for our Predict the Winner competition. So the two times with us, we got a 306.48 versus a 258.08. Winning the two-lap race, Quacha. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. But I'm going to put this board down because it's not important anymore. What matters is your fastest single lap. Have a look here. Anybody you guys want to beat? No, yeah, definitely want to be at the top. <laughs> want to beat Rob Forbes. Of course you do. I'm impressed, bud. To have come back after that little accident and set a time like this is pretty, is pretty impressive. So you beat Julia. You beat Elma. The big question is, do you think you beat Jason Goliath? Yes. Close. 130.46, that is nothing. Quacha, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna move some names down here, but. Hey, this guy. <laughs> you set a one minute 25.62. Just behind Rob Forbes. Well done, bud. Thank you very much. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's a cracker time. For, for my first time, yes. <laughs> so, no, I'm ready for your first. He's been in Aussie V8s. You flipping did a great time. Well done to both of you. Thank Nicely you. done. And for you guys at home, with our viewer competition, one of you predicted that Quacker Smith would be the fastest today. Let's take a look at who our lucky winning viewer was. Congratulations to this week's lucky winner. You have 3,000 Rand to spend on any Goodyear tires fitted at your nearest HiQ center. Well done. Well, it seems that Speed Stars has now become a contact sport. What a cracker episode that was. And well done again to Quacker, nearly, nearly, nearly knocking Rob Forbes off that top position. And also, of course, well done to our lucky winning viewer at home, that Goodyear tire voucher coming your way. If you want to get in on the winning action, very simple, head to our website. And all you've got to do is predict who you think is going to win in next week's celebrity matchup. It really is that easy. Speaking about next week, Two celebrities, two sporting stars from completely different genres. Will it be cricket or rugby who comes out on top? We'll see you again next week, and we wish you many puncture-free miles. Proteas captain Danae van Nikak bowled her way into cricket's record books when she took four wickets without conceding a single run at the ICC Women's World Cup earlier this year. Unbelievable. But will she be equally impressive when she takes a spin at racing?
Ryan Kankowski has done it all in the world of rugby, representing South Africa at both the 15 and 7 aside formats of the game. The fast and skillful number 8 is a self confessed petrol head, but will he be fast and skillful on track? Close. Close.